I'm Norm Shrine, and I am with Springboro head high school football coach Ryan Wilhite. And coach, just have a couple questions for you. Sure, happy to help. Uh, what are the challenges this week getting your team ready to play after coming off a shutout defeat? Yeah, well, we had a we had an interesting uh, team last week. We had had a, a number of starters out for a variety of reasons, uh, um, and probably weren't ourselves. But obviously, you're. As only as good as your last game, and so we understand the challenge as well. Uh, we've talked to our players about this week's a new week, and we're kind of moving forward in a positive way. Uh, Saturday morning was a good learning experience for us on the film, and yesterday was a good day at practice. And we're just going to take it day by day, step by step, and come in with uh, you know not so much worried about the scoreboard as we worried about who we are as people and and how we collectively you know work together as a team. Um. Through the first three games, Moyes Armbruster had over 400 yards rushing. What makes him so effective? Well, I think Moyes is a tailback that has really good balance. Um, I think his vision is good. Uh, he's obviously got speed. Um, and, and Moyes has just continued to develop as a running back, over the, uh, as a sophomore guy that, that got in there some, was a starter last year, and this year is, is just becoming kind of a complete back in the way that he carries the football. How are the two quarterbacks you play? That's Mickey Appel and Sam Feldman, different from one another. Yeah, well, Mikey, Mikey's a, 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 our starter, and and I would tell you that uh, Sam is a guy who can step in and play almost seamlessly for Mikey. There really is not much of a difference, which is one of the good things about playing two quarterbacks. It doesn't change who we are. Uh, we can still be the same kind of team that we want to be in both our run and pass stuff. And uh, they're both really good players. Sam uh, is a varsity caliber player as well. He's a junior. Mikey's a senior. And he's our starter, but we're not afraid to play both of them. Your top receiver, Titan Case, went over 100 yards receiving again last week. So what makes him so hard to defend? Yeah, Titans is a guy who, uh, first of all, his first step is unbelievable. Got a great, great burst uh, right out of the gate. And then he just plays really, really hard. You know, when you combine having a lot of uh, speed and quickness, athleticism with a guy whose motor just goes, uh, I think that's a, sometimes one of your most dangerous players, and that's kind of what Titan is. He just plays really, really hard and a uh, very, very good competitor. As for Fairmont, what are the specific challenges you face this week uh, other than trying to stop Drew Baker on the ground? Yeah, well, I mean, Fair Fairmont's whole... The, the whole scheme of how they're going to try to beat you works together. You know, they they uh, they, they want to hold the ball. Um, they want to uh, put yourself put themselves into into good third downs. So they even go for it on fourth down. Um, they want to limit your possessions, uh, special teams wise. Always trying to get an opportunity to steal a possession from you. So I, I think we have to be sound against the option. We obviously have to be assignment sound. Uh, we have to be physical because they're a physical group up front, and we have to at least meet that, if not exceed their physicality. And then we have to be efficient on offense. You know, that's another piece of the puzzle when you talk about um, how you stop a team like Fairmont in their ground game. It's partly with your defense, but it's also that you're only going to get so many possessions against these guys, and you have to be efficient offensively and, and uh, make it, you know, either flip the field or, or get scoring opportunities for your offense just about every time you touch it. All right, Coach, uh, those are all the questions I have for you. I uh, want to wish you good luck on Friday and also congratulate you on your 100th win. Oh, the other thank day. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm with Dave Miller, head coach of the Fairmont Firebirds, week six coach, right before the playoffs, right? Yep. So uh, let's talk about the Wayne game for a minute. Uh, it started out so well with a forced turnover and touchdown, but 24-7 at halftime, it seemed like the team didn't come out to play. Uh, do you think that uh, that was the case, or did you detect anything in practice that could have led to that? No, I, I agree 100%. I, you, you pretty much took the words out of my mouth. We, we didn't come to play um, you know, for whatever reason. I, I thought our week of practice was good. Um, yeah, it was really you know nice kind of a gift in a way that, that start, you know, the, the – uh, Receiver bounced the ball, bounced off his helmet. We get an interception, uh, short field, go down, and score. So things were looking pretty good. But the, the general um, tempo and, and just you know, I don't know. We were we were pretty lethargic coming out for whatever reason. Uh, then we got back on track in the second half. But you can't spot you know a good team, 17 points. You know, down 24-7. That's that's a, a pretty big hill to climb, especially the way we do things. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was it was kind of still a mystery to me why we came out the way we did. 
Uh, let's go to the end of the game. The halfback pass that would have tied the game, but called back because of a penalty. Do you practice for situations like that? We do, but the personnel, um, you know, this is on us as coaches. We didn't have the personnel uh, the way we had practiced it. Uh, so it was, a, it was a, you know, somebody in, in a position he had not been in uh, in practice and didn't know what to do as far as, you know, um, when we got the ball snapped. But uh, executed, it just we didn't. You got to be set for a second. You know, it's just basic football. But um, so that was a fundamental mistake. But you know, I, I go back. It, it really shouldn't have come down to that. Um, we we uh, if we'd have come out to play, you know, who knows? But uh, the, to be there at the end, like we were, is a testament to the you know the kids continuing to battle. Um, but uh, you know, you don't want to be in those situations where something like that costs you. So. Then the interception on the bust of play that was, was that a miscommunication or should have Helen not run with the ball? No, I mean, that was one, it's there, again, it comes to, you look at those last four plays, you know, I take those as coaches, you know, or me personally, um, on me for sure, it's not our kids. I mean, uh, we had some confusion coming out of the timeout, uh, you know, we had a play called and we changed it before we went out. So half the, half the guys got it, the other half didn't. That's something we're gonna have to improve on. Uh, and he did about as well as you could on that. I mean, if he just elevates the pass a little bit, you know, it's either incomplete or, uh, you know, we had a, a kid wide open in the back of the end zone. It, he connects on it probably, but um, I don't fault him that. You know, that was, that was uh, he's trying to make a play. You know, I thought he did a nice job extending it and uh, just, you know, you learn from things like that. But uh, again, it shouldn't have come down to that. When you lose games by one, six, or even seven points, what is the challenge in keeping the spirit of the team up? Well, you know, it, I don't know. We, we talked about a lot uh, Monday, you know, where we are as a program. And, you know, the fact is that, that the, the record of the teams that you're talking about there, um, well, I, you know, with Northmont in there too, and we lost by two two scores. But um, the last three times we've lost, the record of the, the combined record of the teams we played are 13 and two. You know, so we're not playing Sisters of the Poor, um, and, and we're competing, and we're doing a great job of that. Um, what we talked about yesterday, you know, put a lot of emphasis on is you want to get over the hump and you want to be, you know, an elite program. These are games you have to win, you know, and there are certain things that you have to do. Number one, you got to come ready to play. Uh, you can't make critical mistakes, you know, so you do that against good football teams and, and it's going to cost you. So I think they see it, you know, it's, it's not like we're going out and getting our doors blown off. You know, that would be, that'd be another challenge. Uh, we're competing, you know, and it's frustrating. I know they're frustrated, but I think they sense that there, there's, we can be something pretty special. You know, I think it, it can happen this year. You know, we got to eliminate the things that are killing us. But uh, so, no, I think the mood's really good. We had, we had probably our best practice of the year, honestly, yesterday. Okay, now looking uh, to Springboro, what type of challenge does uh, trying to stop running back uh, Moise Ombrewster present? You got him, and then you got the other kid, Titan Case. It doesn't get any easier. You know, their offensive line is huge, and they're very well coached. Uh, I know that guy personally, and he is one hell of a football coach. Um, you know, uh, so we're going to have our hands full again. You know, we knew that going into Wayne on offense, and and they're just they're explosive, and they showed that uh, these guys aren't any less explosive, and. They can throw the ball too, so they do a lot of things that can can hurt you. So uh, we have to do a good job on offense, you know, and, and take care of the ball and extend drives. And and uh, if we do that, we've got a shot. Uh, you know, this is a, they're a good football team. Um, they're they're one of the best in the conference. You know, so again, every week you got to you got to strap up and go, and that's good to me. That's that's what you want, but uh, it's going to be a major challenge. All right, and finally, the Panthers have played two quarterbacks in Appel and Feldman. What challenges are there in preparing for two signal callers? I think they're both real similar. I, I think they do that purposely because, um, you know, the, the Apple is, is a senior and then Feldman's a junior. They're, they're looking at the future and they want to make sure. Plus, you know, if something happens, one of your quarterbacks, you're ready to go. Um, I think, but really when you look at them, they're very similar um, in, in terms of how, you know, what they're, they're positives are, which are quite a, a lot. They're really good throwers and they can hurt you with their legs, but that's not really uh, what they want to do. But, uh, you know, but they're both, I think, pretty similar guys. So from that standpoint, it, it's, you're preparing for kind of the same deal. So. Okay, coach. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with me and good luck on Friday. No problem. Thank you.